Hey there Unmaskers, welcome to my channel Unmask It Now. In today's episode, we will be looking into how to configure AWS Systems Manager to automatically start and stop EC2 instances. This can be used in your environments such as dev or test where the servers do not need to be running off business hours. So let's switch over to the AWS console. For our test today, you can see that we have two EC2 instances. I've named them as Dev Server 1 and Dev Server 2. We'll use these two servers as part of our test. The first thing we need to do is create an IAM role for the AWS Systems Manager Automation Service. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's switch to the IAM console. Once we are in the IAM console, let's navigate to roles. Click create a role. Under use cases for other AWS services, select systems manager. Select systems manager, allow SSM to call AWS services on your behalf and then click next. AWS systems manager provides a default policy called as the SSM automation role policy. So just let's look for that particular policy first. I'm going to select that policy and then click on next. Let's take a look at the permissions of the Amazon SSM automation role policy. This policy comes by default with a number of permissions, but the permissions that we are particularly interested in is the EC2 start instances and EC2 stop instances that we will use as part of the demo. Let's go ahead and create the role. Before we do that, let's give the role a name. I'm going to name my role as automation SSM role. And then go down and click create role. Once the role is created, let's switch back to the Amazon EC2 console and then tag the instances. I'm going to tag the instances with the environment tag with the key as env and value as dev. I'm going to repeat the same tag for the second instance as well. So we now have two instances which are tagged with the environment tag as dev. Let's now proceed to create a resource group for these two instances. To do so, switch over to the resource groups and tag editor console. Click on create resource group. Let us now create a resource group for the EC2 instances. In this case, we will create a tag based resource group and select the resource type as EC2 instance. We will now provide the tags for the instance. The tag key is env and the value is dev. Then click on add. We do have the option to preview the group resources. You can see that the two instances that have been tagged with that tag key are listed below. Let us now provide a name for the group. I will provide the name as dev servers and use the same name for the description. Let me proceed to now create the group. Let us now proceed to create a maintenance window for the start instances task. To do so, click on the maintenance windows tab in the AWS Systems Manager console and click on create maintenance window. On the create maintenance window page, let us provide a name for the maintenance window. In this case, we will provide the name as start EC2 instances and use the same name for the description. We will unselect unregistered task as we will need to register the tasks later. In the schedule, we want the instances to start at 9 a.m. daily. So we will select the daily tab and mention the duration as 9 a.m. The duration of the maintenance window is a required parameter. In this case, I will provide it as two hours. 
The stop initiating tasks indicates the time before the end of the maintenance window when it will stop initiating any new tasks. We recommend that this duration is less than the duration of the maintenance window. So I'm going to provide the duration of one hour. You can optionally create a window start and the end date, but in this particular section, I'm going to skip that. You can schedule a time zone for this. In this particular case, since I'm in the Melbourne time zone, I will select that as my time zone. However, you can select one that suits your needs. Let's go ahead and create a maintenance window. Once the maintenance window is created, we now need to perform two other tasks. The first one is to re register the targets and the second one is to register the task. So let's go ahead and first register a target. Click on register targets. You can give the target a name. In this particular case, I'm going to call them dev servers. Provide the same name in the description as well and skip the owner information. Let's go ahead and select or uh, choose a resource group under the targets for the resource group that we created previously. In this particular case, the resource group is dev service and I'm going to select the resource type for EC2 instances and then click on register target. Once the target is registered, we now need to go ahead and register a task. Let's go ahead and now register a task for the maintenance window. Since this maintenance window is scheduled to start instances, we will select a task accordingly. Click on actions and register automation task. I'm going to name this task as start EC2 instances and provide the same description. The automation document starts with the prefix AWS hyphen start. So, it's the AWS hyphen start EC2 instance. We we'll leave it as the latest document version. Since this maintenance window has only one task, the priority of the task can be as default, which is one. We will then register the targets for this task. This is the target that we previously created. When providing the input parameters for the task, the instance ID is a required parameter. Considering we're targeting two instances as part of this task right now, um, it's important that we provide a pseudo parameter for this particular task. To learn more about pseudo parameters, you can, you can see this particular document that I've listed here. I will also link this document in the description below. Basically, what pseudo parameters does is it passes the correct values instead of the pseudo parameter placeholders when resolving the resource group targets. In this particular case, we will use the pseudo parameter resource underscore ID and pass that as a value to the instance ID input parameter. In the input parameters, we also need to provide the automation assume role. This is the ARN of the role that we created earlier. So let me switch over to the IM console and grab the ARN of the role and paste it here. Scrolling down, you can also set the rate control settings for concurrency as well as error threshold. I'm going to set the rate control settings for both as 100%. You can also provide the IAM service role as a custom role for the maintenance window. In this particular case, we will leave that as default and then go ahead and click register automation task. Now that we've created a task to start the EC2 instances, we can create a similar maintenance window to stop the EC2 instances. So let me go ahead and create that as well. Click on create maintenance window. We will call this as stop EC2 instances. Provide the same description. Unselect allow unregistered targets and provide a schedule. Here we need to stop the instances at the close of business hours, which happens to be at 5 p.m. every day. So let's go ahead and do that. Similar to the start maintenance windows task, we will also leave the duration and stop initiating tasks as two and one respectively and set the schedule to your time zone. This particular case, I'm going to select the Melbourne time zone and go ahead and create the maintenance window. Once the maintenance window is created, we need to register the targets. I'm going to provide the target name as dev servers. Provide the same description and skip the owner information. 
and select the resource group as earlier. And then proceed to register the target. Once the target is registered, we now need to register the task. The steps will be the same as the task for start EC2 instance, except that we will select a different automation document this time. So click on register automation task. We will name the task as stop EC2 instances. Provide the same description. Scroll down and select the automation document. As you can see, we have now selected a different automation document this time, which performs the stop EC2 instance task. We will then select the document version as the latest and set the task priority as one, since this is the only task in this maintenance window. We will also register the targets like we created earlier. Similar to the input parameters that we set for the start EC2 instances task, we will also set the input parameters for instance ID with the pseudo parameter as resource ID. And provide the same automation assume role ARN. We will also leave the rate control settings as before and set that to 100%. The IM service role will also be left as default and we will then go and register the automation task. Now that we have both maintenance windows created, we can proceed to test that. However, we have set the start EC2 instances maintenance window for 9 a.m and stop EC2 maintenance windows for 5 p.m. However, the next execution time is much later than the current time. So in order to do that, let us go ahead and edit the maintenance window to match the current time. Since my EC2 instances are currently running, I will try to automate and verify if the stop EC2 windows maintenance task is working. So let's go ahead there and edit the time close to the current time. The time currently for me is 4.23. So let me go ahead and edit that. I'm going to set it to one minute from now and save changes. So let's wait for a minute for it to start. In the meantime, let me switch over to the EC2 console and verify the state of the two instances. The instances are still running. Let's give it a few more minutes to see if the automation task is triggered. In order to verify if the maintenance window is triggered, you can switch to the maintenance window and then click on the history tab. You can see that the status of the maintenance window is in progress, which means it is executing currently. Let's switch over to the instances tab and refresh. You can see that there are no more running instances because the automation document has triggered and both the instances are stopping. I've given it a couple of more minutes and you can see that both the instances are stopped now. Let's go ahead and test the start maintenance window task as well. Let me go ahead to this main start maintenance window task and edit the window for a time that's close to the current time. The time right now is 4.25 p.m. So I'm going to switch that to 16.26. Try and save the maintenance window. And now let me just wait for the maintenance window to get triggered. So switching over to the instances console. Let me refresh. You can see the instances are still stopped. I'll switch back to the AWS Systems Manager task. Click on the Start EC2 instances and switch to the History tab to see when the task gets triggered. I've just refreshed this page and you can now see that the status of the task is in progress. Let's switch over to the EC2 console and see if our instances are started. Let me refresh the console and you can see that the instances have started back and are now in the running state and the status checks are initializing. So this concludes the demo for using AWS Systems Manager to automatically start and stop your EC2 instances. Please make sure that you edit the maintenance window duration back to the original values in our case, we set the start instance maintenance window task to 9 a.m. and the stop instance maintenance window task to 5 p.m. You can also perform the same task to automatically start and stop Amazon RDS instances as well 
using AWS Systems Manager. I've written an AWS prescriptive guidance and I will link that in the description below. Also note that in this particular example, we use the IAM role with the default Amazon SSM automation role policy that already includes permissions to start and stop instances. However, you can use a more restrictive IAM permission policy based on your needs for only starting and stopping specific instances based on tags or any other rules that may suit you. Thanks for watching. For more such content, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Unmask It Now. Until next time.